Hi, my name is Dananya, and this is the production breakdown for the song Daydream from Audio Panda's newest EP, Eye of the Storm. Though I'm currently using Pro Tools to show you the different sounds I created with synthesis, the song was initially produced with Ableton Live Den. When I initially came up with the chord progression of Daydream, um, I was just playing around with jazz chords. Um, I didn't even know the chords themselves. I was just playing around with like chord patterns on the guitar. So I definitely didn't have an idea, especially with production in mind uh, before I started the song. But um, once I conceptualized the chords, the first thing I heard was French music. And to me, that's a huge, I mean, that's a huge generalization. But to me, French music was swing jazz. Since this was my first time with production, uh, I did a lot of research beforehand. And by that research, I mean, I listened to a lot of like French jazz music. And I did end up settling on a song, uh, which I've used as my reference track in my mix that I will not even try to pronounce because I, I think I'm going to butcher it. But that had it had the same uh, rhythm as Daydream. So I sort of like used some of the same elements in that song, uh, prominently like shakers, light uh, percussive elements like toms and uh, strings. And I ended up synthesizing the strings as well. I eventually realized that I boxed myself because I was so persistent on mirroring um, that song because it worked. But I never really considered the possibility of just like, you know, trying something else creatively. But I realized in the middle of producing the song, I felt like a kick would have sounded good. In the middle of the song, I, I remember listening to the song and I was like, oh, a kick would sound really good here. And I ended up adding that. And that definitely took the song to a whole other place. I synthesized six instruments in the song. And I sampled this xylophone arpeggio thing, uh, which I ended up speeding up using an auto filter on and eventually using in the song. My advantage here was definitely knowing scales and knowing chords. So melodically, I knew what I wanted to do with my instruments. Uh, that definitely gave me a head start. But I think what I struggled with uh, producing the song was cohesiveness. Because when I approached this, I wasn't looking at, oh, what would sound good here? It was it was like, my, my approach to this was, let me try to create as many sounds as I can, and in the end, I'll pick out the ones that I like, and I'll put them together. And while that might work for some people, and it worked for me as well, it ended up costing me the cohesiveness of the song, and I feel like that's something that I should focus on the next time that I produce something. I would end up... Um, creating these sounds and uh, while they would sound uh, good on their own they never really fit in with the instrumental and that's something that I faced uh, a lot when I was synthesizing with Ableton. Another challenge I faced was creating sounds that were distinct from each other and a lot of the sounds that I initially when I was using synthesis in AOD 174 uh, initially, all the sounds that I came up with were very like video game sounds. By that, I mean that the final product wasn't much different from the initial uh, raw materials, right? So my goal with this was to create something that didn't sound exactly like a sine wave or sawtooth wave. And that's something that Zubin mentioned in class. I tried to create as many unique sounds as possible, not only distinct between each other, but distinct from like sine waves and sawtooth waves which would be used to create them i used i did want to mirror an actual drum kit with the sounds that i used in the percussive part of this song so i used this stick sound this drum stick sound sampled it and used that as a sort of hi-hat and then i had an actual kick I sampled a um, Indian percussion instrument called a tabla as uh, a substitute for the weird tom sound that I talked about in the French uh, song that I used as my reference. I primarily relied on the guitar to fill up the production. I and then I and then I focused the rest of my efforts towards bringing in new sounds. I did use pads and strings in the production process. But I didn't want it to be too heavy. Again, because the guitar would fill up the space, I thought it would be very light. And I didn't, I didn't want to weigh it down with 
these muddy pads. But the pads that I did end up using were one uh, available on Ableton. So there was this one really airy pad. A cello, the foundation of which I synthesized and then used a bunch of audio effects to make it sound more realistic. The simplest to make were the kick and the bass, which were essentially the same sonically speaking. I just took a sine wave on the operator synth, added some other sawtooth waves on top, and messed with the ADSR. So basically the bass had a longer sustain, the kick had a short attack and a short decay. I think the most interesting and the most fun to make was the riser, right before the verse and right before the second chorus. It was, it was very interesting because I, I, I wasn't very familiar with risers, um, but I, I sort of, I used the deconstruct, reconstruct principle that I was taught in class and I was able to synthesize something that actually sounded like a riser. All of the other synthesized sounds were just shorter, quirkier sounds that were used as artifacts. The audio effects on Ableton really came through for me, as in I was able to emphasize the best qualities of each and every sound that I synthesized in order to make them release it together with the track. And um, I didn't really know much about um, all the audio effects and what each of them did. So I, I sort of did this trial and error thing where I would just pick one up randomly and then put them on um, a chain and uh, see what it added to the sound, see if I could use it. And I tried I tried using as much as I could. Um, as in, I didn't, I didn't want to overdo it but I did want to like try and see what I could get with different audio effects I remember one being erosion that I added to this very plucky sound in one of um, in one of the choruses um, and it it essentially just added this metallic uh, punchiness to the sound that was perfect that that I didn't know I wanted but when I got it it was exactly what I needed which is really profound Eventually, as the track took like a new direction, I found newer references for the song, particularly Tom Mish songs and Hon, Honey, I don't know, H-O-N-N-E, their songs as well. We tracked the acoustic guitar and the electric guitar as well for the song. Acoustic guitar I played and the electric guitar, we had this really talented guitarist called Harshit come in and uh, perform a few licks. Uh, that we would add on top and sprinkle uh, in different parts of the song, as you can hear. Simone's vocals were like the final piece to the puzzle, mainly because we knew from the get-go that we wanted a breathy, a breathy vocalist to perform the song. And once she sung over the track, and once I imported all the stems into Pro Tools and calmed her vocals, it added so much character to to the song as a whole and like I really saw it coming together which was which was really cathartic for me so in conclusion I think what I learned from this is that product in production you don't really know where you're gonna go until you try it out uh, and I tried to approach it in a very planned manner and that didn't work out for me but in the end when I sort of went my own way it came together and I think in terms of skills I gained from this, it would be um, experimenting with different sounds, learning more about audio effects and learning more about choruses, flangers um, in Ableton, not only in Ableton, but also in Pro Tools. Um, I think if there's, if there's a lesson I learned from this is to focus on cohesion rather than just creating different sounds and then expecting them to add up together uh, in the end product. This was my way of also getting more familiar with synthesis and sampling. And I do expect to use both in uh, any future production works that I do, specifically sampling, uh, because it's very intriguing. Uh, I really liked what I did with the uh, xylophone sample in this track. So I'm really look for I really look forward to using more vocal sampling maybe in uh, future production projects. And uh, that's the end of my production breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you were able to take something away from this and that I didn't ramble too much. But I hope you enjoyed it.